Okay, well, um, first of all, uh, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me here. It is an honor for me to receive this award. Uh, today I'm going to present the main results of my PhD research uh, about cosmic voids uh, as cosmological laboratories uh, developed at the Institute for uh, Experimental and Theoretical Astronomy in Cordoba, Argentina. Well, this is my team. Uh, this is Dante Paz. Uh, he was my PhD supervisor, and the other ones are my collaborators, uh, Ariel Sánchez, Nelson Padilla, Andrés Ruiz, and Raúl Angulo. Well, uh, let me start with some introduction and the main goals that we pursued in, our, in my projects during my PhD. Okay, so in the last decade, uh, we have entered in an era of high-precision high cosmology. Uh, modern observations show that the universe is not only expanding, it is also accelerating. The standard model of cosmology postulates a flat lambda cold dark matter universe in which this cosmic acceleration can be explained by introducing a new component known as dark energy. From a theoretical point of view, dark energy can be associated with a cosmological constant in Einstein's field equation, which can also be associated with vacuum energy, but alternatively, this could be a hint that we need to review our fundamental laws of gravity, I mean general relativity. Even worse, dark energy is the dominant component of the universe. It contributes to almost 70% to the total energy budget of the universe. So this dark energy problem is one of the major challenges of modern cosmology. Okay. So up to date, the three most important dark energy experiments are the following. The Hubble diagram using distant supernovae 1A as a standard candles, the study of CMB and anisotropies, and the alko pachinsky tests using the BAO scale as a standard ruler. So here in this plot, you can see the cosmological constraints for over two fundamental cosmological parameters, omega matter and omega dark energy, for the three experiments. Two important conclusions can be made from this plot. First, that the constraints are consistent with each other, even though the experiments are independent with each other in the sense that uh, they contain different physics inside. And the second important conclusion is that the constraints have substantially different orientations. So a joint or combined analysis allows us to put even tighter constraints to the parameters. So what is the goal that we pursue with cosmic voids? Well, it is to incorporate tests based on voids to these cosmological toolkits in order to see if we, can, if we can put even tighter constraints to the parameters or even if we can detect any tensions with the model, with the standard model. Voids can be used for cosmology in many ways, but here for this presentation I will focus on two statistics, the void size function and the void galaxy cross correlation function. But before that, a simpler question. What are cosmic voids? Well, we know that galaxies do not distribute randomly in space. Instead, by the action of gravity, they group together, forming different structures, like groups of galaxies, clusters of galaxies, and even larger structures, like filaments and walls. But complementarily, in this process, Galaxies live on their way vast under dense regions. These are the so-called cosmic voids. Here in this map of the Sloan, uh, the darkest zones are potential cos cosmic voids. Okay. The statistical properties of voids depend on two conditioning factors. The first one is the type of tracers that we use to identify voids, namely galaxies from a survey, or dark matter halos or dark matter particles from a simulation. And the other factor is the method that we use to identify voids from the spatial distribution of these tracers. Although there are many classes of void finders, uh, there is a consensus on the basic properties of voids. Roughly speaking, we can say that voids are under dense regions with a density of 10 to 20% of the mean density of the universe 
and with, with sizes in the order of tens of megaparsecs in diameter. And the last question to finish this introduction, why cosmic voids for cosmology? Well, on the one hand, they are the largest observable structures. So they encode key information about the geometry and expansion history of the universe. Moreover, their dynamics can be treated in the, in the linear regime quite well. Furthermore, they are ideal for testing modified gravity theories, mainly because uh, of the unscreening mechanism in underdense environments. And finally, modern spectroscopic surveys are mapping the universe covering a volume and a redshift range without precedence, which allows us to obtain rich samples of voids. Now for the, for the second part of my talk, I will go deeper into the phenomenology of, of voids. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, a key aspect, a central aspect in all voice studies is the method that we use to identify them. For my work, for all my work, I used the so-called spherical void finder. It is based on the integrated density contrast of underdense regions, assuming spherical symmetry and uh, with respect to underdense locations of space. Here you can see the main steps of the algorithm. I don't have time here to explain them uh, in detail, but what is important here is the final output here. The method returns a catalog of voids with the following characteristics. They are under dense spheres that do not overlap with a well-defined radius and center, motivated by physical considerations, from which an isotropic outflow of galaxies is observed. Okay, so now I am in conditions to introduce the first void statistic, the void size function. Mathematically, the void size function quantifies the commoving number density of voids as a function of their size. This is a fancy way of saying a histogram of void rally. So physically, the void size function describes the abundance of voids in the universe. It is analogous to the dark matter halo mass function, so it can be modeled in, the, in a similar way using the excursion set theory combined with the spherical evolution of density perturbations. So there are three main approaches for modeling the void size function, the linear model, the shed and van den Weyert model, and the volume conserving model, uh, which differ uh, uh, with each other in the way they deal in the transition from linear to nonlinear regime. Before I introduce the other voice statistic, the correlation function, I need to introduce first a very important concept that is present in all large-scale structure studies, the concept of spatial distortions. So here at the left, you can see the matter distribution in a numerical simulation. And let us assume that a, an hypothetical observer is located here at the center. So now look at the central map. This is what the observer actually sees. The observer sees a distorted distribution of the galaxies. This effect is known as Regis space distortions, and it is a dynamical, uh, a dynamical effect caused by the peculiar velocities of the galaxies that um, introduce an additional uh, component or contribution to the, Hubble, to the cosmological redshift that we measure due to the Hubble flow. So keep in mind that we infer distances from redshifts, and redshifts are contaminated by this a contribution from peculiar velocities, so we obtain a biased um, estimation of distances. And it, as a product, we, we observe a distorted distribution of tracers. But this is not the complete story. We have another type of spatial distortions, the so-called Alko-Pachinsky distortions. It is a geometrical effect when we select a fiducial cosmology in order to transform the observables that we obtain from a survey, namely angles and redshifts, into a physical distance scale. So if we choose a, a bad cosmology, a bad cosmological parameters, then we obtain, again, a distorted spatial distribution of our tracers. Of course, in observations, both effects appear coupled and indistinguishable a priori. Okay, so now, the other void statistic, the void galaxy cross correlation function. Mathematically, it quantifies the excess probability of finding void galaxy pairs with respect to a homogeneous distribution of such pairs. 
So physically, the void galaxy correlation function characterizes the density fluctuation field around voids. According to the cosmological principle, the correlation function should be represented in a simple way as a one-dimensional profile, radial profile, with respect to the void center. But this is only valid in real space. In Regi space, when we deal with observations, this spherical symmetry breaks into a cylindrical symmetry due to the presence of dynamical and geometrical distortions. So instead of representing the correlation function as a one-dimensional profile, it is better to represent the correlation function as a two-dimensional contour map with axes along and perpendicular to the line of sight. So in these maps, we detect some prominent anisotropic patterns. They are a clear evidence of the presence of a dynamical and geometrical distortions. So analyzing and quantifying these patterns provides us valuable dynamical and cosmological information. In this way, we can make cosmological tests uh, with the correlation function, with voids. So here you can see the main ingredients necessary to model the correlation function. We need prescriptions for the density profile and the velocity profile in real space, and also a physical description for the Alko-Pachinsky distortions and the Regi space distortions. In particular, for the later, there are two main approaches, the linear Kaiser model, but applied to the case of voids, and the Gaussian streaming model that is a quasi-linear approach. Okay, so I'm going to explain now um, the main characteristics of our first, my first uh, project during my PhD. Uh, here we try to investigate the possibility um, of improving the way in which, in which we obtain information about distortions from the correlation maps. So we developed the projected correlations a, a method. They are basically two perpendicular projections from these correlations maps towards both axes. Specifically, projecting the correlation function towards the plane of the sky axis, we get the plane of the sky correlation function that is simply a one-dimensional profile that depends only on the angular coordinate. And in a similar way, if we project the correlation function towards the line of sight axis, we get the line of sight correlation function that it's, it, it is simply a one-dimensional profile that depends only on the redshift coordinate. Um, so here you can see two examples of, uh, with the millennium, uh, okay, the millennium simulation data. And you can, you can see different uh, measurements with different projection ranges in both directions. So our method provides three novel aspects. The first one is that it is a fiducial cosmology free test because we treat correlations directly in terms of voice centric angles and redshifts without the need to assume a distance scale. The second uh, aspect is that the combination of working on this observable space and using two perpendicular projections of the correlation function allows us to effectively break any possible degeneracy between uh, the, pa the parameters involved in models due to dynamical and geometrical uh, distortions. And finally, the third aspect is the covariance matrices associated with the method. They have um, very positive aspects in the likelihood analysis. Uh, for instance, um, they have a notably reduced dimension compared to the traditional way in which we use the correlation maps. Here, as we have two profiles, then the, the covariance matrices associated have a notably reduced dimension. So it, um, it is numerical more stable when inverting needed in the likelihood exploration. Um, this allows us to reduce the propagation of errors in the constraining of the parameters. And finally, this is one of the most important results is that we can use a much less number of mock catalogs. Okay, this slide is just to show you that we have calibrated this method with a numerical simulation and we are getting some very promising results. But now, the, the third part, I have to talk about a big problem that we have. So up to here, I presented cosmic voids as extremely nice cosmological proofs. So in reality, I showed you this phase of cosmic voids. But for the last part of my talk, I'm going to present the other phase of cosmic voids. 
the truth is that we found uh, important obstacles and problems when trying to apply our test to real data, to, observ to observations. Basically, the theoretical models uh, couldn't uh, fit the data, um, and we, get, uh, we obtained biased cosmological constraints. But even more important is the fact that all the void community were facing the same problem, not only us. So the origin of the problem is that our standard picture of distortions around voids is incomplete. So traditionally, we have only focused on the spatial distribution of the galaxies around voids. But the truth is that dynamical and geometrical distortions also affect the first step, the previous step, the, the void finding mechanism. So uh, dynamical and geometrical distortions affect intrinsic global properties of voids such as their number distribution, size, and spatial distribution. This generates additional anisotropic patterns on observations that leads to biased cosmological constraints if they are not taken into account properly. So basically, the problem is that we identify voids here and not here. OK, this is our approach to tackle this problematic. Using our spherical void finder, we try to find a, a physical connection between the identification of voids in real space, free of distortions, and the identification of voids in Resi space, fully affected of distortions. This was not trivial to do because the case of galaxies is very different to the case of voids. Galaxies, on the one hand, can be considered as particles. So under this mapping from real space to Resi space, Galaxies are totally conserved. Only their position changes. But the case of voids is very different, mainly because they are extensive regions. So under this mapping from real space to Resi space, some void can, can be destroyed, whereas other artificial voids can be created. So it is not trivial to answer the question if both population of voids in, re, in real space and in Resi space are really the same. OK, so this is one of the most important slides in my presentation, because here I'm going to summarize the main results that we found. I'm going to do it schematically because of time. But you can ask me later if you want the, the technicalities. So I think this figure can help to get an idea of what is happening. Here I show you the distribution of the galaxies in a numerical simulation with those voids identified in real space in blue, and those voids in Resi space in red. So here we have a generic spherical void in real space as, as provided by our spherical void finder. OK, so the main results are the following. First, those voids above the shot noise level are almost conserved under this mapping from real to Resi space. So it is valid to assume void number conservation. This is a very important aspect because uh, this is a, a, an important hypothesis in all distortions models for voids. OK, so the second result is that under this mapping, voids expand. And this expansion effect is a consequence of the classical dynamical distortions induced by tracer dynamics at scales near the void radius. So as you can see here, in Resi space, a void appears elongated along the line of sight. However, our void finder identifies spheres instead of ellipsoids. So what we get actually is an expanded sphere in, in Resi space. So the next result is that void centers are systematically shifted along the line of sight. And this can be understood if we consider a void as a whole entity moving coherently through space with a net velocity. So this off-centering effect is a consequence of a different class of dynamical distortions induced at larger scales uh, due to the global void dynamics. OK, this is not the complete story. We must also consider the alko pachinsky effect on the dimensions of the void. Uh, unlike the expansion effect, the AP effect on the volume of voids can manifest as an overall expansion or contraction. It all depends on the fiducial cosmology chosen. 
Moreover, we found that all these effects can be treated uh, separately. They are independent effects. And finally, this is uh, valid for the correlation function mainly. We found an additional uh, source of distortion that, uh, th that is the intrinsic ellipticity of voids in real space. So uh, this is considering voids as spherical regions is a first approximation, but if we want to do, uh, to measure with precision, we must consider the intrinsic ellipticity of voids. So a question. Yes. Is the intrinsic, isn't the intrinsic ellipticity correlated with the offset rate? No. No, it is kind of a selection effect. Um, it's a bit long to explain. I can explain it at the end. But when you select a void sample, in Reshi space, when you, you do this connection between real and Reshi space, and you see those voids selected in Reshi space, in real space, uh, you, you see a selection effect that um, elongate, very elongated voids, but in real space, not due to distortions, uh, induce this additional effect. OK, so we provided a complete theoretical framework in order to describe these effects based on physical and dynamical considerations. The important thing here is that this framework depends on the cosmological parameters. So this formulation must be incorporated in current models for the void size function and the void galaxy correlation function in order to obtain unbiased cosmological constraints. And of course, we also provided a statistical framework to prove these effects with the help of a numerical simulation. So I think this picture is funny because it illustrates quite well what is happening with voids. And to finish my presentation, I'm going to explain just briefly uh, the impact that these new effects have on the cosmological statistics. Here you can see the void size function measured with data from a numerical simulation. You can see four curves here. But all these curves correspond to the same data set. The difference is that, for instance, the blue curve is obtained in real space uh, without the effect of distortions. And the other three mimic possible observational measurements. Um, what I want to highlight with this picture is that the difference between all of them is very significant. So it is very important to consider a complete description of distortions around voids in order to model properly the voice size function. And finally, here you can see the projected correlation uh, functions measured with data from the Baryonic Oscillation Spectroscopic Survey. And from this plot, uh, I want to highlight two aspects. The first one is that the line of sight projection, here represented in red, is very sensitive to distortions. And the huge differences you can see here from, with respect to the other projection uh, can be accounted for considering all the effects that I just explained. And the other uh, aspect I want to highlight is that with modern surveys, we can measure the projected correlation functions with a high signal. So I finish my presentation with my conclusions. Uh, cosmic voids are promising cosmological proofs for testing the dark energy problem and alternative gravity theories. However, our standard picture of distortions is incomplete. Traditionally, we have focused only on the spatial distribution of galaxies, but we forgot to consider global properties of voids, such as their number distribution, their size, and spatial distribution. This generates additional anisotropic patterns on measurements that leads to biased cosmological constraints if they are not taken into account properly. So in this sense, we provided a complete theoretical and statistical framework to describe these effects. And we also presented a new Sorry, I also presented a new cosmological test based on the correlation function that provides three novel aspects. First, that we use project, two perpendicular projections of the correlation function that allows us to improve the way in which we gain information about distortions from correlation maps. Second, it is a fiducial free test because we uh, use angles and redshift without assuming a priori a distance scale. It is all contained in models the transformation. And finally, the covariance matrices associated with the method have positive uh, aspects in the likelihood analysis. Finally, the Reshi space effects in voids are detected with high signal with modern surveys. So thank you very much.
Questions? So a comment and a question. So those Rashi space effects are good news, right? Because we have further cosmological information that you can extract from uh, yes. data. So regarding this um, void size function, is it universal? How? Uh, because I'm familiar with the hello mass function. I know that it's not universal to high precision, so you need to do a lot of work to on that. How, how well, is the status? The, yes, the, the void size function, of course, depends on the tracers you use. Uh, more diluted tracers, you will get a, a different amplitude depending on the, uh, the, the sparsity of tracers. But what is important here is that uh, let me, the blue one that is measured in real space can be modeled quite well with excursion set theory. So if you only use the excursion set theory, you will not be able to fit uh, correctly the, the, the curves because, as you can see here, the difference are huge due to distortion. So this is the main, um, uh, the, the, the main idea that we want to, to transmit. Uh, I can show you one of an, an extra slide. If, wait a second. So if if you um, use our theoretical description to correct voice size function, you can correct quite well a voice size function, and then you can use the excursion set, and it, is, it, it, it works uh, quite well for constraining the parameters from the excursion set, involved in the excursion set. But in this description here, when you go from here, oh, sorry, from here to here, you also have uh, more information about the parameters also. Maybe I can ask the question in, with that figure there. So of the five effects that you listed, uh, surely there's a hierarchy. And in, in, from this plot, it seems that uh, alcohol pachinsis is by far the dominant effect. Uh, yes, but I think when you use a fiducial cosmology, cosmology you choose a, a cosmology that is uh, quite well. Perhaps here we exaggerated the values of the parameters, but I think the dynamical distortions, the Rechi space distortions, the red one is the more important. The, the Rechi space distortions. Yes. So uh, I have the hierarchy you mentioned here. Yeah. Sorry. Here. Um, fortunately, the voice size function is only affected by two of, of the four main effects, but the correlation function is fully affected by distortion. So, so you can gain a lot of information if you model properly the correlation function, physical information. Not only about cosmology, but also about the dynamics of cosmic voids and the large scale structure. Uh, okay, yeah, so let, let me see if I, if, I, um, if I can understand this. So. In some, in some way, you're still assuming that you have spherical voids. You're just mapping that spherical voids to something else according to some module, to some effects. But yeah. still, in, fundamentally, you assume that in real space, they would have to be uh, spherical. Yes, but I think the, the term spherical is just for... It's just, it's just, it's the, way of, a, it's it's just a, the way that you look for them. You look through the spherical under density. Yes, what is important here is not the sphericity, is just to locate correctly the center. In real space, if you locate correctly the center, you will see an isotropic outflow. So that is physically important. And for the correlation function, you don't care really the radius. You only want to, to have is, uh, is well located the center. So because you, you measure distances from the center to another galaxy. And from the both size function, yes, uh, it is important the radius, but to do this uh, histogram. And uh, the excursion set theory applied to voids, um, you need to take uh, spherical voids to, to fit as the, the, um, the excursion set is written up to now. Okay, so if there are no further questions, I thank Carlo again. Thank you.